The first stage of any application to study at Oxford University has to be having and seeing in yourself a real passion and enthusiasm for the subject of study, especially coming to a learning environment like Oxford University. That enthusiasm and drive to spend three or four years of your life digging deep into something you're passionate about is the very most important thing. Basically make it your own choice because if you choose something you don't want to do you're going to struggle when you get here. So just choose something that you really enjoy doing and that you want to do. Um, because if you get here and you think you're doing the wrong subject, you'll either end up changing, which is a bit of a hassle, or you're not going to get what you could out of it. Well, Oxford University, of course, is a collegiate university and there are over 30 colleges which take undergraduate students. So how do you choose? First and foremost, come and visit. Come and look around. I'm going to basically live about three hours drive away. And the only day I could um, get down here was the day when only St Anne's had an open day. So I came down, saw St Anne's, thought, OK, never got a chance of getting into Oxford, but I'll apply to this one because it doesn't seem that bad. I took a few open days here at Oxford, and when I saw the colleges, there were a lot of colleges that were beautiful and, and a lot of colleges that had the history and the tradition. Uh, but the, it seemed that St Anne's, although it had an interesting history and tradition of its own, um, had something more than that, and, and that was really the people and, and the, the atmosphere that you get here at St Anne's, and that was very welcoming, very friendly. We live in a virtual world nowadays, so even before you come to Oxford, take the time to visit the websites of the different colleges and indeed of the university's admissions office. There you'll find lots of very interesting and useful podcasts made by colleagues, tutors in the university and indeed students. Well, when I applied to St Anne's, like many other undergraduates, uh, the only access I had to information about the colleges was online. So I just looked um, at every single website, saw what the college was about, saw what the individual subjects was about. I think at St Anne's, the key thing for me was the combination between having a very strong PPE school, which is the subject I'm studying, and also having a college which is kind of modern, relaxed, academically ambitious, uh, it's the kind of place where I could see myself being. Get in touch with colleges that you really are keen on. Contact the tutor for admissions, contact the subject tutors, try and make contact also with current students. And you do it as the applicant, don't have anyone else do it for you. So now you're at the point of completing your UCAS form. What you must remember is that there are very subject-specific additional requirements and aspects of your application which also have to be completed within a very specific time frame. So you need to do your research on the practical side of any UCAS application to Oxford. The first thing we see is the UCAS form that the student, the, the applicant has filled in. And we, we look very carefully at the personal statement at the record of past examination results at the school reference and we read each of those carefully and try and form a view about whether the, the applicant is, um, is suited for the course and is committed to the course. As far as the personal statement goes, I think the best thing you can do is put in as much as you can about why you love your subject um, and that's not just a case of saying I really love French, I really love history or whatever, but how you've gone about um, taking that interest further in your own time outside of school. I would say keep to a minimum things like I did Duke of Edinburgh and um, all of the extracurricular social activities which are good to put in but keep them short because um, it, it's really the enthusiasm for the subject that they're looking for. Academic tutors consider all aspects of your UCAS application and if you're successful you'll be called up for interview. But anyway, when I got the letter saying come for an interview, I was excited but at the same time I was nervous because I, you know, I didn't think I would be successful at the interview. So I got here anyway and uh, the people that were helping out at the interviews were very friendly, down to earth and were very encouraging. For the interview at St Anne's, the, there's no real set structure. Every interview will be different. For science interviews, you probably get some sort of problem to work out. Um, for an arts interview, you might get a, a passage of literature to discuss or something like that. I think the best advice would be to um, try and relax. Obviously, it's easier said than done. But look at it as an opportunity for you to interview the tutors as well and the college and see whether or not 
you're going to like studying here because what, what the interview essentially is is a tutorial um, and it's a chance for the tutor to see whether or not he could teach you or he or she could teach you for the next two or three years and whether you could be taught for the next two or three years. So you want to show me what might There's a great deal of misconception about the Oxford interview and about what it stands for and how it operates and the, the main reason it's there is so that we can see beyond the written reports that come in on a given person and so that we can actually meet them, talk to them face to face and see where there are areas where we think they can grow, where we think that this place will suit them very well. Yeah, there are a lot of myths surrounding interviews at Oxford, especially, um, and they're around no matter what college you're applying to. But at St Anne's, they're definitely not true. Um, you won't be asked to eat a banana in front of the tutors. You won't be assessed on your ability to catch a rugby ball as you walk in the room. You won't have to throw a brick out of the window. That's another one that I heard. Nothing like that happens. That's all rubbish. It's about finding out how well you're going to do and basically having a conversation with people who are experts in the field you've chosen um, to go for. Well, in terms of what we look for um, when applicants arrive for interview, the first thing to say is absolutely genuine enthusiasm for the subject and love for the subject and a real desire to pursue that subject at a university level. It seems like a very obvious thing to say, but actually it's something that not everyone possesses when they come to interview and those who do possess it, it shines through them like a beacon. It's absolutely fantastic and we can see it and we absolutely love it. If you're accepted by St Anne's and given an offer, um, there's not really much that you have to do before October, but you will receive a reading list probably sometime in the middle of August, the start of August. If you don't receive that reading list, obviously it would be a good idea to get in touch with the college. And on that point, I think one of the, the other good bits of advice I could give is if you have any questions throughout any part of the application process, is to get in touch via email. All of the college contacts are on the website and don't be afraid that you're disturbing them or that it's a silly question because if you've got that question the chances are somebody else will have the question as well and it could be something that the college has missed it could be something that is just a, a quick email reply um, and it would solve the problem that you have or put your mind at rest before you get here <laughs>